meetings minutes mm-hmm. na jaribu kukumbuka hizi meetings hizi minutes zinafanya kuaje <laughs> do not want perfect work and i'm just thinking just report action points the way you normally do just give me because i tell people don't give me stories just give me the action points of what i'm supposed to do and mm, but i guess this board wants to hear stories so here i am uh, with very little hours of sleep but all good all good all good all good yeah yeah in fact it's it's really nice because um it's 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 around no no it's it's fine it's around grievance handling and stuff and everything like that it was interesting i'm just thinking wow how nice it ties into this anyway here we are um uh, who wants to pray for us as we start as we begin the day commit it in god's hands pray for us. Lydia, do you want to pray for us, please? I was hoping not because I prayed yesterday, but it's okay. Not a problem. Not a problem. It's mean, always yes. nice to speak to God. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, let us believe and pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, once again, we are grateful that you've given us uh, another opportunity to meet today to continue with the learning and, uh, and uh, interactions. And Father, we commit this uh, session, today's session to you. We pray the Lord you continue to equip us with knowledge and wisdom and even skills. That Father, as we learn through Catherine, the Lord will be equipped to, to be able to excel in the organizations where we work and even in life. We pray the Lord you give us a clarity of uh, understanding and clarity of thoughts. That Lord, whatever the liberations we are going to have, Lord, shall be uh, shall have an impact to us as individuals, and even to the society at large. We pray that Lord, you continue to keep us uh, well, give us good health, and we are grateful that you have protected all of us from the current pandemic of coronavirus. And we pray that you continue to keep us together with our families and even our friends, and everybody else in this country. Father, may you help us that whatever we do shall give you glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Lovely. Thank you. Yeah. It is good to be grateful in what we do. Great. So today, two-part series again on grievance handling, management. You know, what kungunika lafu anapeleka na ukombele, ukombele, tunawakuto ukombele. This is it. This is it. This is it. And um, we want to make sure that we really have a good time and... Um, and and learn as uh, as the prayer has been said. So we will cover most of the things. I will appreciate if um, we share our experiences. We ask questions. We also look at the bigger picture around the labor laws. What happens around grievance handling? You know, uh, what kind of policies we have in our organization? How we can try and uh, mainstream those um, policies into into really looking at best practices and uh, always making sure that they are progressive. They can actually address any matter that is uh, brought to brought to the attention of uh, the people or the relevant people who are concerned with this. So we all we 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 keep on saying let's learn, uh, let's look at the bigger picture, let's uh, let's go out more sharpened. And uh, when I look at this topic in terms of um, grievance handling, uh, just having come uh, yesterday from conflict management. You know, we saw conflict, we saw ways of solving conflict. And then if we are not able to solve those conflicts, and um, I remember us discussing that uh, I can report it as, a, uh, it as a grievance, so we should not let it get there. I think that's the most important thing. And I keep on saying is that uh, one of the things is that we should have data on how how people are feeling working with us you know do all those surveys make sure that uh, you are actually from time to time listening to the said and to the unsaid so that um, you know the temperature and the mood of the organization and of course sometimes you can say mainstream data this is what we are going to this is uh, we are going to collect data over time uh, giving out those surveys that are um, administered towards um, this kind of uh, initiatives so that we collect data. And I think also it is important to put in your HR reports 
of uh, how many disciplinary issues you have, how many grievances have been brought to you to, to the attention of the organization, how many conflicts have been resolved. If you're able to, some, conf some conflicts will not be about, I mean, they are really down there and they've been resolved and people have been able to move on. And of course, uh, most of the time is just basic misunderstanding that, well, we, we, we don't seem to, to, to agree on this issue. And then we, we talk about it and whatever, but there are some conflicts which are really magnified and manifested in a large way. So those ones really need to be captured. But if you are not having statistics and reporting to, to your management or even to the board, the grievances that you have um, in this quarter, next quarter, and cumulatively finding out the real issues around grievances and why they are coming up about, then we need to start thinking. And by the time we finish this seminar, then we will be better people in terms of providing that uh, that data. Okay, so so that's where we are. So today's expectations. Unmute yourself as I bring up my. Raise your hand and mute yourself. Welcome, Alice. Welcome, Eva. Welcome, Grace, Janet, uh, Linda, uh, Lydia, uh, uh, Peptan. Greetings. Oh, that's nice. Perpetual. Perpetual and Priska. So welcome. Uh, we are happy to have you guys and we can start. Okay. Anybody? Uh, expectations of today for the next um, couple of hours before we get to the top of the hour at 11. Expectations? What are we hoping to learn? What are we hoping to take away? For me, yeah. <clears throat> for me, what, what I'm hoping to learn is uh, from colleagues how they have been handling uh, grievances in their workplaces, in other words, best practices, and possibly what kind of policies they have in place that uh, guard or help in uh, grievance handling processes. Mm -hmm. Processes that are in place, um, best practices. What are some of the policies that they have in place to make sure that um, grievance can be handled in a way that um, is is fair, is um, is uh, is within the 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 confinement of your strategy and uh, the objectives of the department? Yeah, I agree. Yeah, uh, yeah. Anybody else? Anybody else? Please feel free to unmute yourself. Hi everyone. Uh, sorry, I, I can't put on my video at the moment, but for me, I'm also here basically to sort of benchmark, uh, just like my colleague, and and and, and see what others are doing and uh, where, where we have we may have shortfalls. Exactly. Thank you, Irene. Welcome. We are where we have shortfalls. What others are doing, you know. Yeah. Thanks, Caroline. HR. Uh, HR policy robust enough for litigations are uh, for litigations to be avoided. I agree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Alice. Uh, good morning, everyone. Yeah. Me, I, I, I really want to understand how the whole process works and more so to apply it um, in my workplace and in every other place that I venture in. Yeah, yeah. Wow, fantastic. Yeah, so not just at the workplace, but every other place, whether you change jobs in the society, if you're called upon to handle a grievance, yeah, that's how it works. What's the importance here? Yeah. I like that. Uh, so, Caro, encourage grievance airing. Kenyan culture prefers to keep quiet. Yesterday, we agreed that the Kenyan culture is passive aggressive. We talk. And then outside there, we have not agreed. We go into the coffee pot. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That kunika. Yeah, that one. Yeah. So, we like to do that a lot. Yeah. <laughs> uh, someone else? So I think those are great, 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 uh, um, great takeaways from this, uh, from this, uh, from this, from this seminar. So allow me to share my screen. Let me bring up my screen, please. Let me share. If, when you see it, you can let me know. It's been working on the slides. Yeah. Okay. Great. Can even see from the picture, the first picture, you know, grievance, dismissal, uh, 
discipline and dismissal management, you know. Um, and of course, you can see the picture. People are stressed. People are thinking, oh, okay, what do I do now? Look at the lady. What can you see? Illustration of the three pictures. She needs conflict management. She needs conflict management. Uh -huh. <laughs> she needs conflict management. Uh -huh. Someone else? What has happened? Can you tell a story from this uh, from this picture? I think the person is being shown the door. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> being shown the door. She is carrying her um, she's carrying her box. Yeah, mm -hmm. can see the box. Yeah. So from here, you know. Started here, maybe she brought the report, it wasn't good enough. She also go show the door, and then she, the supervisor came to. Yeah, Alice, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, Alice. It's okay. It seems um, it, it seems uh, the the way she was <laughs> shown the door, <laughs> it was quite um it was quite unceremonial, mm -hmm. and it seems she had gone through some intra she had gone through some interpersonal conflict where she was, uh, she, there's something she knows, like maybe things could have been handled better. So um, I think she, she really needs this course as well for mm -hmm. her to understand maybe if, uh, how to go about it from there. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, intrapersonal, I like that at least, you know, you can see maybe very conflicted around here, you know, what do I do? And then um, seems to be a conflict, yeah. Alice, uh, Lid, uh, uh, Lydia. Thank you. Uh, in my assessment, looking at the three pictures that are shared, mm. uh, it seems like this lady had been given an assignment and she, she came in to bring the assignment late or she did not uh, deliver. So when she went to the boss, she was the boss was very upset and... Uh, Possibly the boss is telling her, can you go out and sort out whatever it is? And uh, there is a possibility that what caused her not to deliver may have been of personal nature. Then when she was uh, possibly reprimanded by the boss, she chose quitting as the option. Because you see on the second picture, she doesn't have her laptop, which mm. she seems to be holding in the first uh, picture. Instead, now she's carrying a box, which means she has gone to park her personal belongings or whatever belongs to her in the organization. But the boss seems to be stopping her because uh, in the second picture, she's kind of crying while she's carrying her boxes. The boss is seemingly trying to stop her from walking away, but she insisted. Then the boss gave up and went to take his tea and she parted. <laughs> so uh, my thinking is uh, like one of the people have contributed before said she needs some help on uh, our own, how to handle conflicts rather than quitting mm -hmm. in a better way. In a better way, yeah. Thank you, Lydia. Good illustration. Uh, very capturing the moments, Caroline, and then Alice. Yes, um, I'm looking at the boss in the three, three pictures and I'm thinking he's the one who needs a little training because in the first picture, I'm assuming that, uh, he, okay, my assumption is the way he looks so hard is that he did not even listen to why whatever she was supposed to do is not done. And he was very quick to point, point away to either go and do it or get out of here. Mm -hmm. Then in the second picture, the lady is wondering, do I stay with this environment? I'm not ready, but she's holding her box but at the same time she seems to be having some something that she could have said but again the boss is so arrogant at the back there with his hands akimbo and uh, he's not putting on um you know a, a, a stance that welcomes communication then in the third picture there he looks very satisfied to be taking a cup of tea as someone is walking away with a heavy heart with her carton and you can see 
there's something in her eyes that uh, she needed to tell. There's something she needed to say. So sometimes people leave. You don't know why they are leaving. Um, was it that serious? And then you start, you employ another one and you start picture number one again. So I think sometimes uh, uh, those who are supervisors need to be a bit careful how you get gruff and rough and uh, just showing people the door and uh, you didn't even follow process. You didn't sit down to listen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that picture is showing us that we need to, 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 to be a bit more empathetic. There's no empathy at all in this whole scenario. Thank you, Carol, thank you. Yeah, Alice? Yeah, uh, actually, Caroline has brought it out so well, just what I had in mind, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Very, so thank you all. The, um, we can see it's a real bad application of um, lack of listening, lack of empathy, arrogance, uh, very intimidated, you know, those ones of um, the, he must be shouting, you know, even his demeanor says it all, everything. The poor girl with her big box. So she even had flowers, you see here, with her little flower, her little pot, you know, to make her desks, to make her desk um, more cheerful every day as we come to the office. She's packed and she's going and this one must be thinking, I'm the boss, I've been here for 20 years, after all, what can you tell me? I've seen and had it all. So if you're not taking those um, those moments to have to have feedback coming from the managers, how my team's doing, the managers to check themselves in, to be told the risk that they carry for the business if they don't manage people well, we'll find ourselves a lot of the times in labor courts. I keep on saying it's it's never feel bad HR if um if uh, if if you find your organization being taken to the labor court it is not you it's the line manager who's responsible for what has happened and you sort out the mess of course by the time we get there it's 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 very unfortunate we must say and uh, we should try as much as possible to make sure that when we are giving support to line managers, it is the right thing. You know, these are the performance measures. This is how we measure performance. This is the behavior. This is how we measure behavior. These are the projects we are working on. This is what should be happening. These are the values. And then are you fitting in that role? Are you ready to take it to the next level? The line managers must be called to meetings and they must call themselves to a meeting every other day if they want to see success of the teams, because we know that people don't leave their jobs, they leave their supervisors, isn't it? And I'm sure many of us here have had stories or even have experienced us as, an in, as individuals, um, places where we were not um, well supervised. And um, we kept thinking, when will this nightmare end? so that I can go. This is hell and beyond. This is hell and beyond. So uh, I think um, it is important for us to every day make sure that uh, the role of the supervisors is to motivate their teams, lead their teams, and execute the company strategy. All these other things they have already told you, I want to employ um uh this for this position this skill and whatever and hr has delivered so you have people who who are doing the job if you keep meddling in their jobs that is when you start having all these uh, conflicts and then it leads to a grievance okay so those are the objectives like uh, what um we have just said uh, illustrated even from the first picture and also when we went around and say what are our expectations from this uh, two day ever. Okay. Who has a grievance policy at their place of work by show of hands, reaction? How many of us here have a yeah, two, yeah, grievance? Yeah, ah, all of us, yeah, many, fantastic, well done. And what's the purpose of that grievance uh, policy? What's the purpose? Priska, what's the purpose of your grievance uh, policy? 
uh, the, the purpose of the grievance policy is to ensure that um, there is a standard that is expected in the organization, that uh, there is a, a, a communication channel so that uh, if you have something that is going on, you're able to um, either raise it through your, if not your immediate supervisor, your second supervisor. And if it involves the two supervisors, there's a whistleblowing uh, uh, line. And so it gives people that um, comfort of knowing that they have a place they can go to. Exactly, exactly. That um, it's, it's, it gives people the assurance that uh, something, if I have something to raise, it has not been addressed, I will raise it up and everybody is aware. I keep on saying there are two things that you should do as a HR to shine away when someone joins. First, even before, as they are joining, you send that package. You know, you send the welcome package with uh, maybe um, a branded material of the organization to make them happy, you know, and they are all psyched. Now everything is ready. So the first thing when they join and they come, is for them to fill those gaps, you know, especially the, the, the next of kin and the benefits form because people can die on their first day of employment. In fact, me, I, I am so clear in my head. Don't do anything else on the first day. You know, fill those forms. Take your time. Those next of kin and benefits form and everything, take your time even if it's five hours the whole day. Think of whom you want to nominate. And of course, the thing is that um, if you've already started your own match earlier, which should be the case, you know, that whatever. Then the next thing is that as you're setting the culture and the pace that day um, of the organization, you're actually telling them we have an open, uh, we, we are very open, um, we, 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 we talk things out, you should never feel that you cannot address any issue. And there are policies and processes of how you're able to do that. You know, uh, we hope that you're going to enjoy the stay with us. However, there are some areas that uh, could come into place and that is conflict, you know, how do we handle a conflict? And not necessarily that uh, it's a bad thing. It can happen, some disagreements. Again, if you feel by anybody in the organization, including me as HR, including the CEO, this is what happens in this organization. And we will go, uh, go along, as we go along, there'll be exams that will be required to, to show you have, have understood. And then the last thing is to make sure that they understand also how a uh, disciplinary process is actually done, is actually is actually also handled. So that is very important for us to be able to, to understand that. It's to set the pace and people to know that, ooh, okay, I've come to a place where things are put on the fold. That, that's that's topic that we need to discuss a little bit more. And I like one of us saying that Kenyans that don't just speak up and we just speak, uh, burying our heads in the sand, keep it out in the open and say that this is what happened. So uh, I think we have that uh, opportunity to be able to do that, yeah. Someone else who has, a, we all have um, grievance management policies. Why? Why? Anybody else? Anybody else? Okay. Uh, uh, let's, um, so, what is a uh, what's uh, what is a discipline and grievance ma what is what is discipline and grievance management? So we are very what is uh, let me ask this question: the difference between punishment and discipline. Difference between management and discipline. Anyone? Going to discipline you. I am going to yes, yes, Lucy. Did you ask the difference between discipline and grievance? Or what 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 was the question? Punishment, Punishment uh, and discipline. Yeah. I think discipline can mm -hmm. be awarded in any way. Mm -hmm. 
of a particular situation where both of us know. And uh, punishment is when you have not followed, yeah. even after the discipline, the punishment goes after you have not, you are, you are, you're not following, even after discipline, you have not learned. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> yeah. Okay, someone else? Punishment, discipline, any difference? What comes after I, the other? I, or I, I, think, think I think for me, punishment is negative. Discipline, we are, when you punish, you're just seeking to make that person do what uh, you want them to do. But uh, discipline is, is really a process to correct and uh, and and to correct and and to correct the misbehavior and also maybe to teach how to 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 do it right or to follow the rules and uh, yeah it has to do with corrections other than just getting someone to comply without uh, exactly comply yeah. without showing why it is yeah so punishment very very punitive uh, very frowned about about uh, very negative and we tend not to learn. I mean, we 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 come out uh, out of it with a lot of bitterness. Discipline. We are working together. I, I'm explaining to you. This is what you have done as a child. You know. In fact, all this um a lot of discussion around discipline and punishment has come as a result of a lot of um, parenting and uh, and uh, better way to raise up uh, children discipline more show them the process you know uh why why you are being disciplined why you're being given time out you know why this uh will be withheld and what does that mean for you you actually are able to reflect back and say oh okay um it was warranted you know instead of you just coming being condemned and um um punishment being meted and you feel very bad about it okay so discipline and grievance management refers to the way companies are governed with respect to discipline and grievances. It is the technique by which companies are directed and managed to uh, drive discipline. It is actually conducted by the discipline and uh, grievance management team, or you can have an ad hoc team, or you can have a team that is uh, already put in place all the time, and other concern committees for the companies and stakeholders benefit. It is all about balancing organizational, individual and disciplinary goals. The way we govern, are governed around respect to discipline and uh, procedures. Discipline and governance, uh, discipline and grievance management is basically detailed disclosure of information and an account of the organization's disciplinary grievance situation and commitment to business ethics and values. Discipline and grievance management deals with determining, uh, with determining ways to take effective strategic decisions. It, it gives ultimate authority and complete responsibility to the discipline and grievance management team to take disciplinary action after consultation with management. So we want to see that it actually borders uh, to make sure that we are committed to our business ethics and values. It's um, for us to be able to take effective strategic decisions and the ultimate authority and complete responsibility to, uh, to, the, uh, to this is to take disciplinary action after consultation with management you know someone has raised the uh, uh, grievance and uh, a grievance and we'll be able to see how that actually keeps increasing as we go by okay um so why discipline and why discipline and uh, grievance management why why do we see that discipline and grievance management is essential for if for efficiency as well as globalization of an organization. You know, we want to make sure that when we have these um, processes in place, uh, it is essential for the efficiency of running of the organization. It ensures transparency, 
which ensures strong and balanced moral, moral development. So we all know that when I have this, when I am assured that the process is correct and will run well for me, and it is transparent, whether I am reporting a grievance um, around the CEO, it is the same. I will not be victimized. I, it will be heard and the process will be followed. It ensures that the interests of all stakeholders, majority as well minority stakeholders, are safeguarded. It ensures that all employees fully exercise their rights and that of the organization fully recognizes their rights. You know, I can fully exercise that right without intimidation, without victimization, without any favor. And the organization fully recognizes that I have those rights and those rights, they are actually going to be actioned. Um, it has a broad scope, which includes both social and institutional aspects. And why do we say social? We say social because it is brand visibility. It is for our own brand visibility. You don't want people going out there and shaking their heads and saying, mm -mm, if you raise that, it's not going to be. You also want people to have social reinforcement and uh, reinforcing around that even when I'm not there, I am still taken care of because we want to have balanced human beings. And then uh, it encourages trust, morale, as well as an ethical environment. So let me let me ask a question. Let me pause there. And uh, when we look at all these, um, if we have a case of sexual harassment or, um, yeah, sexual harassment in the organization and uh, someone, someone reports it, is that a grievance? Is that a grievance? Are they reporting a grievance? Alice, yes? Yes, they are. Mm -hmm. That's, a yeah. That's a grievance. That's a grievance, yeah. Um, do we handle um, and I'm asking that in the in the in the aspect of the labor laws, is sexual harassment handled the same way as um let's take a case of um my supervisor always finding fault in my work and it makes me it's it's making our working relationship very uncomfortable and i have facts to say to show that uh, my work is error free and it is delivered on time and stuff like that will we handle those two matters for, uh, the same Will you handle those two issues the same? Yes or no? In your opinion, there's no right or wrong. There's no right or wrong. Mm -hmm. Yes, Alice? Okay, I think uh, the, the section one, and yeah. uh, the work, the other one I, I can term it as just workplace harassment eh? mm -hmm. between the boss and the employee, and both mm -hmm. of them will be handled differently mm -hmm. because How they have. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, because they have guidelines and sanctions regarding the same, and they are all they are both different. Mm -hmm. They're both different. They will be handled differently. Okay, thank you. At least someone else. Work harassment versus sexual harassment. And just think around it in the context of the labor laws, what it, uh, it's very explicit about sexual harassment um, in the labor law. Is it employment act here, yeah, whichever. Mm -hmm. Someone else? Yes, Malim. This is yeah. Hello. Yes, Hi. Gabriel here. Yes. Hi, Gabriel. Hi. I. I. Yes, Malim. Thank you. I think uh, uh, the sexual harassment one will be handled a little bit different. Mm -hmm. 
because there is a requirement you have a sexual harassment policy on its own standalone mm. uh, in in an We lost you. Mm -hmm. Standalone sexual harassment policy. We Hello? lost you over there. Please continue, yeah. Yes, whereas uh, the the policy on grievance uh, manage. We lost uh, Gabriel. His connection is not. Would stand on its own alone as a, on sexual harassment. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, mm -hmm. Alice. Alice, please unmute. Uh, in my view, with the sexual harassment, um, mm -hmm. more uh, it, it favors the woman more in the mm -hmm. workplace, whereas mm. the other one, it favors, it, it covers all, it caters for all uh, the employees, both whether it's a male or a female. But mm -hmm. the sexual harassment um, uh, policies and laws and guidelines, they favor mm -hmm. more women. <laughs> they, fa they favor more women. Yeah, it, it, it lays more favor on the female part. Because mm -hmm. more complaints actually come from women. On sexual harassment. Yes. Um, is it, so is it uh, from research or from, from yes. just, uh, perception around sexual harassment is more prevalent around uh, women? From research. From research. Yes. Okay. I think one of the things that we need to be very aware of is um, if you have a case of sexual harassment, you need to act decisively, quickly, and the seriousness that it deserves. Uh, and why are we saying that? We are saying that because it is actually a standalone, very, very explicit. In fact, if anything, don't try to sugarcoat, don't try to, to make it more fancy um, from um, try to put things in your policy around sexual harassment. Just lift the act as it is and put it in your HR handbook or HR manual. It's very explicit. Just lift it. Of course, you can have all those other things, um, preamble or whatever it is talking about your brand and stuff, the way we put our policies. But the way it should be handled is very, 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 very explicit and it should be um, it should be handled within that. Because if people feel that you have actually diverted from that, how it is required around the labor laws, you can be in a lot of trouble. The liability and the risk that you put your organization in is very different. Grievance handling on the other side, it's important to have a watertight process like what we have seen that everybody recognizes it, it's their right to be able to be heard in whatever way that we feel is a grievance. And don't ever invalidate anybody's feelings to say, me or two, and we also, you know, it can be as late as the policy of organization encourages people not to send emails after six o'clock. We are also very cautious and very conservative, for example, these are examples I'm citing, that please don't call people after office hours unless it is extremely, extremely important and urgent. Even by the time you are calling them, you are also apologetic and even saying, I know I'm not supposed to be calling you, Catherine, after hours. However, this is extremely urgent that um, we address it because tomorrow I have the board. I am ready to go for the board, but there's something that is missing. Please let me just pick your mind for even you say for five minutes. You know, if it goes over five minutes, 
and that person doesn't have time, they need to come and say, I'm sorry, five minutes are over. Let's, um, um, I, I cannot continue. And you will not feel bad that they have said that. Or even say, well, five minutes I know are over. It says, no, no, let's finish. I know this is important and things like that. If they, If you have the habit of calling them and your policy says, be very, very aware that you're not supposed to call people after hours and they raise a grievance and you say, but we're always talking about work. If we don't talk about work, um, how are we going to make the profits and things like that? Then it's time for you to change your policies and say, we work 24-7, 365. And here whether people are going to agree to that kind of a policy. You know that we can call you anytime. And again, we also hide behind the, the notion that after all, I've provided you the phone, I've provided you the data, I've provided you airtime, so why can't you pick my call? Why can't you call me back? We are so on one, we want to be, we want to say one thing, but we want to practice another thing. We say, oh, we are all for wellness and well-being. We want balanced human beings in our organization. We want to make sure that people come refreshed and happy to continue in the same way. But how do, on the other side, how are you treating them? That's why I'm saying that consistency, talking to line managers from time to time, these things that people just loosely talk about, we need to give examples on how it can be a risk to the organization. And when I bring it as a grievance, by the time I'm bringing it as a grievance, it is so manifested. I have tried to talk to you. Please don't. Please stop. I don't feel good about this, you know. And then finally, I come and say, I'll take it forward now. And then you're actually feeling bad about it, isn't it? By the time people always say, about. No, when you think about it, it is not a one faced event. It is things that have actually been building. Okay. Alice, someone else? Need to. Inafanya to peleka nembele. Someone else? Please unmute and contribute. Someone? Anyone would like to say something? This is what we made us go into the next whatever. Anyone would like to contribute there? Okay, great. So let's be aware of that. Okay, so what are some of the principles of disciplinary and grievance handling uh, management? The following are the key principles or some of the good principles around. We keep on saying, well, there will always be principles. And I'm sure you, you, you are aware of this. These are things that uh, we are all aware and we can be able to. It has a core approach to it, you know, organizational image, um, the, the culture and the society that we operate in. You know, people know the society know the, the, the area and the jurisdiction of where your products and services uh, are anchored around and uh, where you actually make sure that you, you operate. The brand, people know you around there and how do you feel that you relate with them? Because people will live around there. Families of the people who work with you, uh, who work in your company will live around there and that uh, the image and the approach is very important. A balanced objective, agreement of goals by all interested parties. What does that mean? Balanced objectives? Balanced objectives? Agreement of goals by all interested parties. What does that mean? Someone? Balanced objectives? that we understand what and what and what. I ring Carol, Alice, I'm just going down my panel, Grace, Annie, David, Gladys, Carol, HRM, anyone? Balanced objectives, it's just what it is, you know. 
I think mainly it would, it would be like the staff uh the staff welfare and then the institutional welfare also mm -hmm. so both like the staff if it is in terms of your being having time off and in terms of work so we balance both at the same time balance objectives uh -huh. the 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 aspect of work and uh, your own free time someone else balance objectives Anyone else? Your targets should be balanced within your expertise. Your targets should be in line with the department's objectives. Your targets and goals should be also within reach. They should also be aligned to the strategy of the organization so that you know how you are contributing. And then when you feel that these, um, these uh, objectives are actually balanced, it's very easy for you to be able to do what? To be able to have a balanced um, work-life balance in the organization. The existence of proper decision-making processes and mechanisms, decisions should reflect all discipline and ethical principles and give due importance to all. Uh -huh. Equal participation of each party roles of key players such as the owners, the directors and staff. You know, everybody should feel that indeed they are accommodated, they are heard and they, their voice is actually on the table. And it's not like, oh, none of the business doesn't listen to us. The directors who are given the responsibility to run the organization do not listen to us. There's equal participation up to the level of your position up to where you can participate. Um, caring for uh, key stakeholders through, uh, though some have greater importance than others, you know, and, and that's whatever, caring for stakeholders. For example, if you work in, um, in a child, in a child institution, for example. I think the key primary focus of caring for those children because they need more care will be more urgent compared to a manufacturing institution where everybody is able to take a bit of more care about themselves and or even maybe in a hospital setting where their patients and those are stakeholders there. They are their stakeholders who have come and you need to take a bit of more care and more responsibility about that. Accountability and transparency to all stakeholders that everybody is accountable and everybody is transparent. It's beyond measure that if, for, if an audit was to be done, if we were to look at our best practices and to do the frameworks, we would actually not have any gaps around accountability and transparency of how these processes are actually done. Any question there, up to there? Is this really what, is it reflective of your current, um, current, current processes and policy of grievance handling, management in totality, you know, the bigger picture of grievance management every day. And we want to create environments where it's, we communicate. We are happy to provide feedback. Feedback is given to us. We're also seeking out for that feedback so that we don't get to a grievance situ into a grievance situation. Okay. So discipline. Um, so for the organization is to ensure proper document, uh, ensure proper documentation of discipline and grievance related issues and concern. We should always make sure that we document, provide input for training and development needs for discipline and uh, grievance re uh, redressal, help to identify organizational, organizational discipline and grievance redressal related to strengths and weaknesses. Who does this? By show of hands, that we have developed training around the area of grievance handling. Training could be even a town hall meeting of 30 minutes and say, in this town hall meeting today, in this company-wide staff, uh, staff meeting, we will be addressing one of our policies and one of our policies that is reverse handling. By show of hands, you have this in your academy. Oh, thanks, Lydia, and someone else. So tell us what happens, Lydia. 
please share with us. Thank you, Catherine. Uh, for us, what happened is uh, late last year from October, yeah. the organization, we came up with uh, a process to review all our policies because we had realized some had been around for quite some time. So after we reviewed all of them, we yeah. planned or organized mm -hmm. for entire staff training on all our policies and uh, guidelines. Yeah. And we went through every individual policy. We shared the, the policies through email to all the staff members. And uh, from the trainings, we had an opportunity to have contribution and input yeah. from the individual staff members. Mm -hmm. So we had that uh, organization-wide training on policies and procedures. OK, fantastic. And of course, one of them must have been there grievance handling uh -huh. yes. okay great yes. yeah and of course uh what you're saying is that though if there was input to 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 progress it or to refine it or to update it then people had uh a say in it well done someone else deliberate training around disciplinary uh grievance handling anyone else Oh, well, it is there in page uh, 70, I think, when you go to page, uh, it can be more than page 76. Just check around there. You'll find it. Go and read. <laughs> Someone else? Irene? For us, we, we've documented our grievance procedure in as a flowchart showing that uh, showing what a person should do from the first point is when they have a grievance and up to you know how it should progress so it's a flowchart and it's part of our uh, of our employee handbook that we endeavor to take through all new employees during the orientation process so that they know yeah, yeah. exactly an easy an easy illustrated way of um of people to be able to understand it's always very nice to make sure that um, you, you, your policies also have a flow chart. If some of them, if, if some of the policies are, uh, if you can put a flow chart, you know, if, if it comes to this, yes, proceed, this will be proceed. If it's no, it ends here and stuff like that. So well done, well done. Yeah, I'm sure uh, people picking things and uh, you, you can be able to share someone else, someone else. And the, I, I, I admire people who are able to do visio uh, programming because I take it to my guys and say, please make for me a flowchart out of this. And what they come is, oh my gosh, I say, you'll go straight to heaven, straight to heaven, you know, for doing this. And yeah, you know, yeah, some people just have skills, you know, to say, interpret it. After I have drawn it on a paper, this is what, and they come putting it very nicely, very, very catchy. You're able to do that, yeah, well done. Okay. Offer legal protection from discipline and compliance related misconducts. Feedback clarifies management's expectations of employees in terms of their moral conduct as they work in this organization to take measures for employees' improvement pertaining to discipline and compliance. Mm -hmm. Compliance, very, very important. Create and define systems for redressal of grievances between employees. Input to validation of discipline and dis uh, dismissal, dismissal procedures. Assessment of workforce discipline and moral conduct level. So I keep on saying, you can pick this and please go and run with it. These notes, which are... It will be already provided for in the SCHRP portal. You can pick this and become part, you can form part of your uh, updating of your policies or even just uh, ability to start uh, developing your policies. Input to HR planning for conducting training related to discipline and uh, grievance reporting. Develop positive relationships to reduce grievances and maintain organizational control over misconduct and keep business legally sound at all times. A real important framework for us to be able to understand the role of HR in handling grievances is to make sure that there's no risk to the business, there's no liability around the issues 
that people can raise if we can stop them from the very beginning you know this we have a grievance procedure feel free to use it this is how it is used feel free to follow the process don't shy away from saying how you feel and how you are being treated you know but before that it gets to there is our duty to make sure that the environment in the organization is credible and good enough so that grievances are not uh, are not uh, documented because the moment someone documents a, a grievance it must be heard it must be heard unless they themselves say i have come i would like to withdraw the grievance there is no and you pressure on me to withdraw it we have spoken with the person or the parties who had aggrieved me and i am happy to go anybody who has faced such an uh, a scenario withdrawal of a grievance and what did you do anyone anyone who has been um someone has um has brought up grievance and then after that after a few days when we are starting to to put uh, motions in place this is how it's going to be all of a sudden they come and say no 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 i've thought otherwise i'm not going i'm not going ahead with it what do you do i think for us we uh once when uh, two people have come or someone has come with a grievance against the other and we've uh, kicked off the process mm -hmm. and then um, because the first step is for, for the two to maybe to try and resolve the issue before it goes further down mm -hmm. uh, they, then they come back and say you know they, they either forgiven each other or they uh, they found a solution to whatever it is then what we do is ensure that the it's still fully documented it's still fully documented, even though uh, they, they want to withdraw whatever it is, yeah. Yeah, what do you mean by fully documented? What is that process of fully documenting it? Uh, the process of fully documenting it, of course, is, uh, uh, is starting with, depending on what it is, uh, because if it was discipline, maybe we would have started with the show course letter and, or whatever, but if it's a grievance, it's just, uh, documenting the meetings at uh, the minutes of the meetings that took place either between HR and the person or or when they come back to to withdraw and all that and having them sign off uh, to agree that um, they've indeed uh, uh, withdrawn the case and they are satisfied yeah yeah and way forward why they are withdrawing yes. what was uh, what what discussions they held yes. um, when the discussions were held, what mm -hmm. action points they have taken, both of mm -hmm. them, what they commit to, both mm -hmm. of them, mm -hmm. and sign off and say, well, yeah, so that, that's well done. Yeah, that's how it should be. Someone else? Someone else? Thank you, Erin. Someone else? People who have withdrawn, what do you do? we've been able to do that okay yeah and that's the right and give people the opportunity and to if, if they can't agree let's 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 get it out of the way that's the same thing even in court where people are being encouraged are you able to settle this matter out of court if uh, if you can you know and come and um free up the courts for other really serious uh, things that are, um, are so urgent and they are blocking and if, if we can agree. Even the good book says, iron out your differences before you get in front of the judge. Because if you get in front of the judge, what happens? Things are going to be worse than what uh, they were before. Yeah, okay. So what is the purpose of uh, grievance management? Purpose, let's go around. We can be many as uh, many, the purpose of grievance management in organization. We can be as many as we are in this, um, in this workshop. Please let's share.
Okay. Purpose of uh, it to provide feedback about employees' uh, grievances. Um, provide um, uh, first is to offer direction for more for a more disciplined workforce. You know, we are saying that um, if we are aware that uh, we have a real good process, and I am going to use that process if you cross the line. Um, in a way that I feel that you are not following the uh, the processes, you know what? I am going to report you. And I don't think anyone wants to be reported ever, 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 ever. Yeah, nobody wants to be reported. I think as human beings, we want to stay in the straight and narrow road. So it offers a direction for a more disciplined workforce. And it's um, it's it's it should be natural. But again, Oh, because we know that employees can be very, very rogue, and I'm using that very sensitively and very uh, loosely, is of, it offers a direction to know that we are all going to be disciplined. And everybody knows I don't want to be taken forward. So I would rather be following the rules and regulations of this organization so that we I do not get to the next level of having to be disciplined or having to be reported actually provides input for discipline improvement well we have a lot of cases coming up well what would be the issue you know can i please look at how can we please relook at our policies maybe some of them are not working for us maybe they have gaps and people are taking advantage of those gaps we have grown over time we need more policies to strengthen our um, our workforce and our business, our, our strategy has changed. We need to be able to look at the policies that we have in place and be able to upgrade them or even update them. Provide feedback about employees' grievances, okay? And then clarifies discipline perception to the employee. Why do we have, um, what is the perception around grievance handling? Many a times. Do we feel that um, it has positive reinforcement? It gives people positive reinforcement. It should anyway. But how do people feel around grievance handling? There's no right or wrong. It's and out of our experiences as well. Yeah, Lucy? I think if it is all open to everybody, the procedures and the disciplines, they feel there is a fairness and they everybody it's transparent. So they feel they were well addressed, their issues are well addressed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it gives them a positive feedback that when I get there, I know I, my grievances shall be addressed. Exactly. Yeah. It gives confidence. It gives the confidence. Workers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, uh, someone else helps in the development of a grievance-free environment. Perception around the whole perception, just around grievance, you know. And what happens is that I can bet for sure if you go because it's is it is it under employee relations? Yeah, when you go under those policies, many under employee relations, we start with um, what do we always start with. What are it follows each other, and that's why I want us to talk about this perception. What are the three policies there? Pop, 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 pop after each other. What are the three? There is always there sexual harassment policy, there's the grievance handling policy. And there is the, what is that other one? Um, the disciplinary policy, isn't it? So those ones, I mean, they're all anchored there and they, sometimes they can be shrouded with a lot of mystery and people are thinking, ah, okay. How they are the best policies in the organization. But sometimes because of the perception that uh, can be around it, what happens? Clarify that perception of discipline is there a perception around? Okay. This, by the time, can be also my page 55 from 55 to 78. Koshida. 
a lot of the perception around this policy. What do we feel? Anyone? Anyone? If we have a good environment where we talk about it, it's part of it's part of our process. It helps maintain good cordial working relationship. If that um, the cordial working relationships are hampered or if they are strained, we have ways to address it. So everybody knows that it is a good thing to have. It is important to have, and I can use it, and I will not be victimized if I use it. And also, yeah, the other one I was looking for is the whistleblowing policy. Helps in the de uh, development of a grievance-free uh, grievance environment, offers motivation for future level of effort and direction of grievance handling. You know, everybody, everybody now starts understanding that um, the future level of effort and I can be called to sit in that committee, uh, direction in grievance handling. And again, if we are having the same issues all the time, then it's time for us to address the root cause of the issue and be able to um, uh, get better ways of handling that, uh, that issue that is always coming up. Helps to drive coerciveness among employees, yeah? Helps to identify organizational related uh, weaknesses and provides coaching, counseling, and discipline training to employees. Any question there? The purpose of uh, grievance management? Is that what it is in the organization? Related weaknesses in the organization, the gaps that are there. Okay, great. So what are the don'ts of disciplinary management system? What should, uh, what must be there for an efficient grievance management system? What should actually be there? Anyone? Okay. Someone read for us then. And then we can check them out one by one, please. Should. An effective someone unmute and please read for us. Okay, hi Catherine, this is Lucy Muhio. I'm going yeah, to read. Thank you. Do's of discipline and grievance management system. Mm -hmm. An effective discipline and grievance management system should collaborate with leaders, mm -hmm. participate in management of the business from a disciplinary perspective, mm -hmm. influence the organization's agenda with regards to disciplinary disciplinary misconduct implications, mm -hmm. provide disciplinary consulting and advisory services, mm -hmm. provide input to organization to create innovative disciplinary solutions and actions, and work with senior management and HR operations to ensure new disciplinary programs and processes are effectively communicated and implemented within the business. Mm, thank you. Do you want to summarize and maybe give examples? So, yeah, not putting you on the spot, but even anyone else, you know, what you should and what you have seen. Okay, I think uh, my understanding of this um, is that the discipline and management system should not be like a, a dictatorial thing. It should be something that has been talked and agreed with the, let's say, like the stakeholders. So in terms of leaders, I take this to be... HR itself has a lead in terms of guiding the manage the line managers on a, how the process uh, should be. Um, and then it should be actually active. Yeah, and um, how we do things, how employees maybe who have fallen out of line are, are, um, are handled should be guided by what the, the policy or the procedure provides. Uh, so the manager, for example, the line manager, when, and let's say, let's, let's say like the employee's manager, uh, the employee is late or is, um, has done some work in a way that should not be done. 
mm. and he wants to know how to do it. They should be able to consult this uh, discipline process or disciplinary policy to be guided on how they are supposed to, to handle the issue. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, continue. Provide feedback. Okay, so further it goes on to say that it, it should be able to provide feedback to senior management about effectiveness of the disciplinary processes, programs and processes, coach and counsel senior leaders on issues of personal effectiveness, leadership and team cohesion with respect to discipline and uh, grievance. Because, and why we are emphasizing this is because half the time, senior leaders are so rushed to execute the mandate of the business, and they forget that they are part of this. They actually forget that they are part of this. So it's important from time to time, from HR, from a HR perspective, in your leadership tree and say, today, give me five minutes to talk about our disciplinary process. Give me five minutes to talk our grievance process, you know, to keep it very alive. So even when they hear things on the corridor, they already are so self-aware of, yes, we have a policy. This is what the policy says. This is maybe where I can help, even when it's still at the very ground level. I am able to arrest it as quickly as possible. But if we are not talking and assuming, and we always assume that these senior people, senior leaders in the organization know these things. Yes, they do. But how are they supposed to handle it when they, are, when they hear it? when they are sought after, um, the, their advice and um, is sought after, and even them themselves, if they find themselves in the hot seat of being um, uh, disciplined or even a grievance has been raised uh, about them. Support culture change initiatives and to establish key communication strategies for events that impact people to handle grievances advise senior leaders and manage, uh, management on serious employee relationship issues and manage risk effectively. That I had already said in the beginning, that uh, from today, your reports should actually capture whether there are any disciplinary issues going on or even there are any grievances that have been reported by employees. If there are none, you just say none for the quarter, none for the year, because uh, at the end of the year, even when you are doing audits, you always ask how many open cases do you have so that we can also be able to budget for how much legal uh, representation we need. How much will that cost us? If we see that the likelihood that um, an employee might win this case, what is the award that they might be given? Are we ready to pay that hefty award? Where is that money going to come from? So it is your responsibility to make sure that you preempt these things. And the only way that you can be able to preempt these things as a HR technical advisor to the business is by making sure that from the very beginning, your performance management systems in the organization, which look after the whole, whole processes of how you govern people in the organization, are beyond doubt in terms of fit for purpose, that we don't get ourselves into a disciplinary issue or we don't get ourselves into a grievance issue. So your communication, your line managers are doing what it is. People understand their jobs. We are always talking about these things and we are also evaluating and measuring. And we are also telling people, these are the consequences should you not be able to do what is required of you, okay? Any question there? Do we feel that senior management uh, plays a big role? Do they understand this? Or they think that, well, that is for middle managers and whatever. We are too, we are too busy to think about these things. What can we do to support them? Is there anything that we can do to support them more? Or what have you put in place to support Libya senior leadership in the area of discipline and uh, grievance management? Please share with us. Please share.
Anyone? Nothing. They know. You assume they know. They know everything. Mm -hmm. Do they? Anyone? No? Okay. So what are the dawns? Now we have the do's. We have looked at the do's. What are the dawns that we should not be doing? Someone um, read for us and try and unpack it for us as well. Maybe just with a few examples or just to reinforce some of the things that we have said. Feel free to unmute and read. Um, I want to read. Thank you, Lydia. These are dawns of a discipline and grievance management system. Mm -hmm. An effective discipline and grievance management system should not, yeah. one, manage misconduct related transactions either for employees or on behalf of managers. Number two, should not manage confidential data other than to view or generate reports for disciplinary analysis purposes. Mm -hmm. And finally, should not involve themselves in more routine employees, employee relation issues, especially related to operations. Okay, let me just uh, put this one and then uh, you read these two and then we, we lump them up together for discussion. Okay, I continue. Yeah. Should not answer routine inquiries from employees or managers about policies, programs, benefits, or processes not related to discipline or grievance. Mm -hmm. Should not facilitate training or facilitate new or revised program implementations that are not related to discipline or grievance. Yeah, yeah. thank you very much. There is that tip there. Oh, you yeah, missed yeah. it. Okay. Yeah, I removed it here, yeah, sorry. Right. So the thing is that it should not. It should actually, when we think about discipline and, uh, and, um, and grievance, we should keep it to where it should be. We should not bring and add on other things. You remember where I said about, especially when I look at many policies around sexual harassment. Sometimes I say, you've put all these things are you able to interpret them to the letter if someone asks? If you're able to, by all means, and there are best practices and actually incrementally support the ones that have been uh, identified by the Employment Act, by all means, please go ahead. If you, again, you have a standardized way of uh, doing that because maybe you're a multinational, so you've borrowed some of the uh, head office policies which you are supposed to have um, bring into the local context and something like that, by all means, please do. However, don't add things which are not part of this discussion because it creates confusion. They become now start, they now start becoming ambiguous and that's not what you want. You know, you want to make sure that you keep it simple, you keep it real and people can be able to relate even at the lowest level, this is what it means. This is what it says. There is no, uh, there is no uh, gray areas. It's it's white. It's white. It's black. It's black. So make sure that that is done. Um, anybody else who would like to contribute there? Anybody else who would like to contribute? Mm -hmm. It should involve themselves in more routine employee relation uh, issues, uh, especially related to operations. You know how we um, it's 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 not conflict. It's not it doesn't address. I mean, misunderstandings. It's not part of discipline. It's not part of grievance unless now it has been escalated. That's when it becomes. But just because I didn't greet you in the morning, I came in and I went straight to my office and I come out at 10. You know, it should not be constructed that there is a grievance or there is a there is a discipline issue. You know, uh, relational issues where well this um, this machine needs to be stopped exactly at um, ten o'clock. Uh, you stopped it at ten thirty. 
And then you say, oh, by the way, uh, why I stopped it at 10.30 is because we started off, uh, instead of 8, we started off at 8.30. So we are still within the time. Ah, okay, fine, go ahead, and uh, that's okay. You know, routine things that we are talking about, uh, just because it has uh, deviated from the norm, but we, if you're able to explain it, that should not be uh, should not be brought as part of uh, grievance, okay, or discipline issues. Discipline leaders should always try to instill discipline and ethics and moral values in their team members by telling a compelling story and morally rich story. People love to hear stories, you know. People like to hear things that have really worked, just like here where we share experiences. What's happening? You know, those ones really stick. You, you remember the 70, 20, 10 way of, of, uh, of acquiring knowledge and skills. However, it is equally important that they must also pan personify that uh, discipline. Uh, they must also personify that disciplinary and moral stories by leaving that story. What is that? Walking the talk. You know, this is it. But if you're not walking the talk, you're just um, empty debit that is making the most noise. Remember that one in the in, in class where the teacher says, empty debits make the most noise, meaning that you did not get that lesson. You're just making noise, noise, noise. And then when the exam comes, oh, you are not ready for the exam and uh, the teacher feels disappointed when uh, when you fail, okay? Any question? just goes to show that and remember that we are all leaders in our own rights leadership is very different from management very very different that we are all called to work on very high moral standards okay yes lydia uh thank you catherine i think for me there is something that uh, either i did not get it or we did not fully address it the question you had asked of how how do we keep our senior managers uh, inform, informed or abreast with what is happening regarding disciplinary procedures. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't quite pick what the response was or what we agreed. Okay, thank you, Lydia. I threw the question to plenary. People are very quiet. Uh -huh. Thank you, Lydia, for, I, I did uh, say something. Someone can recap what I said in my opinion. Uh -huh. And please let's share. I think it's very, I asked senior management, how do we hold them accountable? You know, always rushed, always busy to look after the next uh, profit where it's coming from. And ideally that's what they should be doing. But sometimes they fizzle out in these things and say, ah, oh, those ones will be handled by, we already got people to handle it, HR. What is HR doing? That is part of HR. And then they also ask, oh, what are the line managers doing? They should be doing that. Let's share. Irene, Grace, I'm calling people out now. Let's share our experiences in getting senior management involved in discipline and um, grievance handling, even just to create awareness. Carol, Alice, Lydia, Priska, Jocelyn, Annie. I, I can. Uh... I can share. Yeah. Thank uh, you. What I found is that uh, managers are always in a hurry and they, they, they the HR issues, everybody thinks that they know what they should do. But sometimes uh, the, they make some mistakes that are easily avoidable. <clears throat> so what I, I found useful is to do a very brief um, circulation on how the process should go. So if you have done a warning, um, make sure that you, you write to the person and the language that you use in that letter should be factual. On this day, this time, this happened, mm -hmm. and uh, we agreed, one, two, three. These are the issues that I thought we need to address. Then on, in the same letter, ask the staff to respond to that issue. So what I, I, I try to do is to ensure that they have a way of tracking what they want done. And then the other thing that uh, also helped is uh, to keep on engaging the managers. You cannot discipline like this. You cannot do it like that, like that. Yeah. Constantly telling them that this is the process. You can't discipline like this. You can't um, 
uh, you, you can't say this, this is a writing language. This is what needs to be included. This, this is the content that actually should be included. Yes. Thank you, Caro, for sharing that. Someone else? Someone else? What have you done for your senior leadership? For me, what I have found, uh, because of the cultural context of the organization, most of the senior leadership, of course, are, are, are not well versed with, um, with, maybe with the legal expectations or requirements. Mm -hmm. And so there's, there's a part of education and, and sharing information, but I find it very important for them to be involved because when senior leadership is not, then it erodes trust in the organization. There's very little trust between senior uh, leadership. So I think as HR, we have to play the that balancing role of uh, ensuring that senior leadership as well are, are involved in the disciplinary process and grievance management of, of their employees. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I like what you have said. The two words I have picked there is uh, eroding of trust, that um, people feel that uh, the the leadership is far removed, so they don't care about this process. You must you must involve them in um, in making those decisions, and especially around uh, discipline issues. Uh, who's going to sign off if the appeal is going to come? Them the and if it's the CEO who is addressed. Um, to handle the appeal, they should be able to know that this is coming and that uh, they should be in copy and they should understand the process. Not that morning calling you and say, ah, Catherine, um, this matter is coming up at 10. Please, please come and um, brief me and uh, tell me what to do. Yeah, they do that all the time, don't they? You know, you put the report there, let's discuss two weeks later. And yeah, so just making sure that uh, you involve them from the very beginning. Someone else, one more, one more sharing, thank you. One more. Mm -hmm. One more. Anyone would like to share what they are doing in the organization? Mm -hmm. To make sure that uh, we are keeping track and senior management is really seen to be involved and they actually also understand what should be done, okay. So let me pose a question here. Um, so you can see that uh, Catherine's performance is not working. It's not working. It's not working. Hey, we've talked, we've talked, we've talked. Um, and the next, next week, what's going to happen is uh, definitely we need to give her people performance improvement quickly. You know, we want to help you improve. We, 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 we are not saying that we want to fire you. All what we are saying is that you are not meeting the performance thresholds. You have the capacity, but of late, no, no, no. We've asked you whether you have a problem, and for sure next week. Uh, we say, well, it's Friday, so let's do it on Monday. Friday, 5 o'clock, we get a grievance uh, letter from Catherine saying that. Um, they are not happy with the way the supervisor is uh, handling them. What do you do? What do you do? So Catherine has raised a grievance against her supervisor. And on the other side, we know that we've been discussing and saying, no, she has to go on a peep Monday. In fact, um, you have sent the forms to fill in and uh, so that on Monday we have that discussion, both parties present, this is it, sign off, and the PIP starts. But lo and behold, 5555 five, five, five in the evening, I am raising a grievance. How would you handle? And it will come. These things will come, I can assure you. Either they have come or they are coming, or even when if you are doing CHRP, these are the questions that will be asked. This 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 webinars have a nice uh, a nice twist around everything workplace society CHRP if you are doing your exams come one come all what will you do what will you do 
Uh, Lucy? Yeah, can unmute yourself. Let's see on mute. Uh, um, I think, uh, sorry, I got a bit technical hit there. I, I was not seeing the unmute. I don't know if it disappeared yeah. somehow. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that. Now, in that case, if the process yeah. has already started and the employee is very much aware that uh, there is something that was ongoing in regards to their performance, Mm -hmm. And they've come at the last minute to 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 raise a, a grievance mm -hmm. of, of the sort that uh, you've mentioned. Mm -hmm. Then I think I would tell them that there is already an ongoing process that they are aware, mm -hmm. and they should wait for its conclusion. And then if they are not happy with the decision that is reached, then mm -hmm. they can raise a complaint. They can appeal then at that level, but mm -hmm. not like to preempt because now it doesn't look like it's genuine. It's not. Um, motivated by some good purpose. It's just some self-interest they're trying to protect themselves. So I would advise them to wait for the process and then they can maybe appeal against the decision that is reached if they're not happy. Yeah, yeah, after 90 days, yeah. Of course you read to uh, wrong intent. You know, definitely they're trying to protect themselves, but they come and tell you, Lucy, let me just tell you for a fact has not come to me. I have not signed anything. And I have brought my document. Here is my document. They push back. They push back and push back. Uh, definitely, that's the right thing to do, you know. Uh -huh. yeah. uh, my, my contribution, Catherine, is uh, in, the, in the scenario you've given, mm. I have a question. By the time we were getting to when we are having this discussion that this kind of this particular staff needs to go on a PIP mm. was, was the staff part of the discussion. Because in my understanding, this should come as a result of performance management, particularly the appraisers feedback. It should have been very clearly documented that uh, the person is not performing. So that by the time the management is taking a decision, it's not coming as a surprise to the staff. So if the staff is aware up to that point, their grievance is really not genuine or there couldn't be more to it than what we don't know. Because we may be saying they are trying to protect themselves or to preserve themselves, yet there could be something about their supervisor that has not been reported or not on record. Mm -hmm. I think for me, much as a, we may want to go the Lucy way to say you wait, but then it is also important to pay attention to what they are saying because we can't just trash everything. There could be more to what we know. There could be something we don't know. It's true. It's, 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 it's dicey. By the time I'm being put on a PIP, guys, we have talked about feedback. We've talked about constant evaluation. We've talked about coaching every day. By the time I'm put on PIP, I'm in ICU. In fact, I should be, in fact, if it's me saying, and yeah, we're now, <laughs> I'm on PIP. There is nothing I can do. I, I can see it and it's fair and it's square. It should be there. So there are two scenarios. By the time I'm being put on PIP in a good organization, it's, it's beyond transparent and fairness that I really need to go on PIP. And why you should go on a PIP, I do not understand because how bad is this that I've not been able to resolve if we are having constant feedback? You get what I mean? Unfortunately, yes. Cumulatively, you can put someone on PIP. Okay. And um, again, you can't just wake up one day without having this discussion like what Lucy and Lydia are saying and just decide um, we are going to put you on PIP. And maybe in this scenario, your best friend had us discussing HR and the line manager saying, uh, we have to put Lucy on PIP from Monday. And Lydia rushed to Catherine. Catherine, guess what? Hey, you're being discussed. You're being going to be put on PIP. Are PIP, why? Nobody has told me. And both me and, um, my, uh, and my friend say, you know, the best thing to do is raise a grievance. 
and then they ask that's the time it's your your policy una kuanga page page 58 and umeiona and meiona this is what happens page 58 and then i hear the there the forms where is the form the forms are on the internet in sharepoint you know how to operate sharepoint no i don't know how to operate me i know pull out the form they pull out the form and they raise whatever it just shows goes to show like what we have said in the previous slides we need to have open communication you know so you are faced with two scenarios where now the whole thing is very murky and we've already antagonized the system all of us are antagonized if someone is already aware that they will be put on pip and we say we've had this discussion it's a friday evening Everybody seems to, we are not able to complete this process. The forms are going to be going out on Monday. Let's meet at 10 to sign them off. Everybody, well, it's not a very good weekend for me because it's, uh, it's not the best feedback that I have received, but I know. But rushing now back to put a grievance, it's, it's, it just, um, it's bad intention, you know. And um, But what can we do? Because People change. You, you see people reacting when things are not in their favor. People are very irrational. What would you do? What, what else can you do? Put in the grievance. If things are bound to happen and say, I will not even sign it. Do you let them run concurrently? Do you let it finish after three months? After three months, you guys really want to just show me the door. I'm not sure that I will pass the PIP. Three months is a long time. You want my grievance just to stay there. Already spoiled the really, you know, strained relationships. What can we do in those circumstances? What more can we do? Thank you, Lydia. Uh, Lydia? Yeah. <laughs> Anybody else who would like to contribute? Real case scenarios at our workplace? Or even that we know people and there are many, many, many um, cases which are in court and ruled over where someone is, a, is undergoing disciplinary and they have decided, you know what's gonna happen? I'm going to resign midway. There are many cases which have been ruled against that, yeah. Well, what we are trying to say and uh, discuss is that we should try as much as possible, create systems and processes, and maybe say, even in your, in, in your, in your policy, say that uh, you can't raise maybe a grievance when you're on a PIP, you know, or maybe in the beginning when you know that the PIP is going to be, you have to let the process finish and then, uh, raise the grievance, but can you raise a grievance in the second month of your PIP? Can you raise a grievance I, in the second month of your PIP? I, I think uh, if you are the if you are the line manager, mm -hmm. and you're the one who has given the PIP, I would uh, recommend that the grievance goes to HR. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> then uh, you let the person air their their issues, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And that's why communication is very important because HR should already be in the picture that there's a PIP and these are the areas that have been agreed upon. Mm -hmm. So not to not to look like your like your open door policy and then at the same time you only want one process to complete before the other. So that you also have an opportunity maybe to encourage the person, let's go back to what was approved uh, on your PIP. Let's see how far are you on this, how far on this. So you reinforce whatever the manager is saying. However, during that grievance, you may find that that manager is not willing to assist and is not willing to train on the areas that were agreed upon or is very rash or is emotional or is just not willing to continue with you. So mm -hmm. they might just be wasting your time for the three months. So mm -hmm. I would say let the person uh, air it out with a different party, not the person who gave the PIP. 
Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, and of and course, when you raise on the earlier thing you said about yeah. the, there was going to be a, a disciplinary and then there is a grievance. Yeah. Let it also come to HR mm -hmm. and uh, talk to the person and uh, hear if the issues that are being raised may be. Uh, there may be a malicious agenda in the disciplinary issues, then you can come and find out what is happening. Then on the day of the disciplinary, then let someone else who is more objective in the HR, who will be more objective in the disciplinary process, mm -hmm. go into that committee instead of you having had the grievance, being the same one listening to the uh, disciplinary. Yeah. Of course, yeah, definitely. The neutrality of the of the parties cannot be underestimated. Who, who's the neutral one, who is more objective, you know, even in the organizations, you know, who is uh, real objective, who's level-headed, who will, who will not take sides, who will really look at things objectively and uh, say as it is, you know, and if we have those processes to make sure that that is going on pretty well. Uh, grievance should always be brought to HR so that HR initiates the process and, oh, okay, you've raised a grievance, um, okay, this is it, and start the process and let the person who has uh, raised it understand, yes, it is here, and the person who has been, um, who's raised in the grievance, really you communicate with them and say, we've received a grievance and uh, it has come on this day, we've recorded it, we will, uh, we will start the process. We look at it, of course, we will now start the process within um, the 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 laid down processes of the organization. Okay, any question? Thank you all for your feedback. I think that was great. Um, so what is the- Hi, uh, hi Catherine. Hello. Yes, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, as part of the don'ts, mm -hmm. and uh, this relates to those personal issues of employees. And uh, they come and tell you, my colleague, we are in the same department. We have an issue, and they are not. Uh, sub we are not working together. We are not in good terms. Mm -hmm. And they tell you it's because of uh, we are related in a way. So there's an issue happening in our family. So we have a grudge, and you are the HR person. How do you basically deal with such? very personal issues they're affecting two of your employees one has come it's not even the it's not even the line manager who has come no 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 it's the employees it's the employees but one has yes. come not both of them no no one has come one has come yes So in the first instance, they, let me ask you, Diana, how did these two people come to work together in the same department? They are, okay, basically it's like a second line cousin. Yes, like, no, like, not second, not even like yeah. first cousin. We are yeah. related, yeah. distance, distance relations. Distance, who called? Like yes. Who who eh. So who I joined it? then after three years, when Zangwa Kandikwa, Okay. And then oh, I yes. discovered, oh, okay, so, oh, yeah. <laughs> so they come and meet. <laughs> then later on, you realize, oh, they are related. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that is the kind of a scenario. Yeah. Then things are happening. Yeah. Yeah, extended family. Mm -hmm. Now they are affecting. Are they, are they both officers, or one is a supervisor and the other one is a. No, they are both uh, officers. Uh, yeah. Not really like a supervisor, and one is not same level. The yeah, same more or less the same level, but now they have one of them has brought an issue. Wow, wow. Okay, so let's unpack these guys. What would we do? I think HR uh, may not have solutions for everything. Mm -hmm. So what I ask whoever has come is uh, what do you think what, what do you, how far do you think you can tolerate this issue or uh, do you want us to air it with the two of you outside the office because you're bringing outside issues to affect your work 
and then also are you doing your work as you should are you productive is your other colleague productive because if mm. both of you need the job then uh, you need to uh, find uh, ground. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. thank you caroline remember what we said yesterday the last two days conflict is caused as a result of interdependency you remember if i don't depend on you there will never be any conflict and uh, these are we also talked about personal conflicts and now this has actually come into play it's at the workplace we need to work together we cannot see eye to eye because of this um family problem feud that we have now we found ourselves at the workplace and maybe the me who i have come to to report the matter to hr it's not more of um, i'm seeking for a solution how do i make sure that um i can work with this person we need her work depends on me my work depends on her we are not working well together. You can see that um, she's not finishing her work on time because of this. We cannot even talk. You know, we cannot discuss. Even the emails are not... Uh, the way you talk to someone and the way you write is very different. A, a conversation for two hours, by the time you are trying to write a conversation on two hours on email, really? How are we going to resolve this? How can we help these two people in the department? One has seen, no, it cannot continue. I'm going straight to HR. This is very confidential, but please help me. How are we going to do that? Thank you, Carol, for that. I think it's really good input. HR cannot resolve everything. Not all conflicts are uh, can be resolved. And remember also, they need to be a process. You remember yesterday of elimination. So before we get to elimination, before let's call her, let's call this colleague Mary, who has come to say that um, she's not able to work with her colleague, let's call her colleague John. There is need to be a way of, of, of resolving this personal differences which are coming from Uko Ushagokwetu. How else can we? We can say, can we try and resolve it outside the sphere of work? Can we call a mediator so that if you guys, both of you value your work and what are some of the things that she's doing or he's doing that you're not able to 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 continue working um and sooner than later those gaps are now going to be are now going to be seen someone else would there be a possibility of transferring them to different departments perhaps if if you if if you are capable of doing that if both of them are really good employees and there is this problem that um, they have and you're able to assist them as um as an organization one transfers to one department and uh, to to stop that and still retain their jobs that's also a possibility um and keeping very that very confidential as to why i mean transferring to another different department it's um well there's an opportunity i fit the i i, I fit the job role I, i'll be moving you know what if there's no possibility of transferring them? And we've talked, they've agreed to, maybe the other person says, well, I'm not ready to talk. In fact, she came to HR. To wear that, who is she to do that? Now John takes the, she goes to, John goes to report what Mary has done. She even took our nini, our differences, and they're the ones who are antagonizing us. Name Fikia Nini. It's there in the public domain. What can we do? What else can we do? Hey yeah, guys, what can we do? Don'ts. Anyone? Lydia, Alice, Priska. I keep reading out names just the way they appear here. Anyone? One would like to say that. Diana, what have you done of late? 
to try and um, resolve that. Also, is there a possibility of transferring them to another department? Are you on mute? So, sorry, Catherine, my internet is a bit unstable, so I missed yeah. the, the question. Oh, the question is that there are two relatives working in the same department, and um, they are having uh, personal differences from a home front, mm -hmm. and one of them has actually come to report to HR in very confidentially that um, this is what's happening, and they want a solution because now, they are not able to work together. How can we help okay. him? And Carol was very... Uh, in such a case... Uh, yeah. Okay. In such a case? Carol was... Sorry. I wanted Carol to hear what Carol said. Yeah, yeah. Carol said um, we can try and we, we are not able to resolve all problems uh, as HR. And this, since these are personal differences, is there a possibility that both of them can be called together and we can have that discussion and to see how best to work together, you know, try and address the issue. Um, yeah, from that perspective. Yeah, I think I agree with Carol. Mm. My my contribution would be as a uh, HR managers or HR practitioners, mm. we are also trained on some basic counseling skills. Mm. I would recommend that we apply that kind of uh, training or the skills that we have on counseling mm. to try and see how to address the matter with the two of them. Because mm. there is a danger of, if it is Lydia and Catherine who are relatives and are fighting, if you start seeing them independently, you may never actually get to understand the real problem. Because mm -hmm. the human nature is, all of us will try to paint a good side of us and a bad side of the other person. That can be quite, uh, it can be quite a difficult situation for the HR manager. So mm -hmm. the best is to use your counseling skills and wisdom to bring them on board together, then see how to address the matter. But like you said, Things that are of personal nature may not be fully resolved unless the involved parties are willing to resolve those uh, differences. Mm -hmm. Then if the, if the worst comes to the worst, you apply mm -hmm. what does your policy say regarding such matters and does your organization allow employing relatives also? Mm -hmm. yeah. so you double up policies and your counseling skills and also your personal wisdom. Yeah, yeah. They came in much later and found themselves here. Allah, we are come from the same village, from the same clan. Who's your mm -hmm. dad? Who's your grandfather? Ah, then we are cousins. In fact, do you know so and so? Ah, even that. Ah, you were in yeah. that party. I didn't. I I saw you, but you know the way things just and then ah, then all of a sudden the two families start fighting, mm -hmm. and the infighting comes to the, and they are working together. Yes, lady. I Lucy, I saw you with your hand up raised. Yes, um, my, I, I wanted to make a contribution on this yeah. and say that, um, especially in a big organization, um, uh, if, we, if we handle such issues, they can really be overwhelming on HR, because as you know, usually HR, we are not that many, like you might find a whole organization with maybe even thousands of employees, but HR personnel are like 30 or even less. Eh? Mm -hmm. So I think we have to be very careful on uh, the issues we want to get involved in. Otherwise, we can get overwhelmed. So I think my, my view is that if the, the disagreements between the two employees are not impacting on work, they are just their manenos out there. I would rather maybe tell them that uh, for those ones that have nothing to do with work, uh, sort them out themselves without involving us as HR. But if whatever relationship they are having is impacting on work and maybe even on others, then I would have to, I, I would suggest that a reality check be done on them where they are told that um, at the end of the day, this issue is between you uh, to resolve. But if you're not able to resolve it and it's affecting others, there can be consequences on you. Um, there can be consequences on you in terms of 
your jobs? Uh, will you be able to continue working in this organization if you're having this issue that is impacting not only you, and uh, but others as well in the workplace? And I think once that reality check is brought to their attention, they may be able to also get sober and resolve the issues that they have. Thank you, Lucy. Uh, very direct, very um, in terms of, um, of HR being lean and thin and, and making sure that what, but one of the things that we should be very careful around is that when someone comes to seek for guidance and help, we should not, um, we should listen. First and foremost is to be able to listen and articulate the matter. If we are not able to provide gu guidance or help, we should um, we should refer it to the place to the right place where they are uh, they are able to get help. But we should always, and this is everybody in the organization. I'm not saying that HR should be more empathetic than the CEO. The heart of empathy should be worn every day as you get into the gate. And anyway, should never be removed by any human being. Um, so that people don't feel that, well, I went to HR and you know what they said? They said, resolve our matters out there. After all, it's not if affecting our work. It's if affecting that person. You remember the intrapersonal conflicts that they have? That is really going to make them feel very more emotional draining for them. So even as we are trying to say, yes, we are going to be very rational about it, there is a place for us to listen. There is a place for us to uh, unpack it. And there is a place for us to be able to give solutions. So even this solution where you want to say that, unfortunately, we might not be able to take up this matter and we would like you guys to resolve it at family level. However, because you come to work here eight hours in a day, what is our duty of care as an employer? And if me, Catherine Omwangi, I'm not able to do it, maybe my HR officer is able to do it. Maybe our wellness program, someone who we can trust and say, would you mind that uh, we extend this help to you people? We've extended help. Whether you pick it or not, it is up to you. After we extend that help, I like what Lucy has uh, Lucy has said is that if it's going to impact your work, if it is going to impact the rest of the of the team, we might need to take more uh, more action around that. But at least we've offered help around what we need to help around what we need to do. So remember that twenty percent of your workforce is going through issues. Those issues are part of their performance and they should be resolved, and they can only come to you if you have a trusting and open environment, okay? Great, anybody else who would like to contribute there? That's a good one, Diana. Do you feel that you can go back to your surelas and, um, and help them out? Try and resolve it. Where did Diana go to? Diana, do you feel that uh, you can do that? Is what we have said a bit more flexible around what we're able to do? I hope so, I hope so. Anyway, so let's move on. Very good questions and thank you all for your feedback. Yeah, I like it. So what is the process around uh, discipline and uh, grievance management? Uh, what kind of process do we have? So we, we have to assess, and I won't go into details because it's things that we are discussing as we go along. We have to design, we have to propose, we must implement, and we must measure. We must always measure what we are doing. So what is to assess? Ask great questions. Don't accept a quick answer as to what's wrong. Collect and use data to understand, get the root cause. You know, what, what's the process we're going to follow here around uh, what's happening? Then design. Look at alternative solutions to leading practices, uh, uh, to solutions and leading practices. What's up? What's happening out there? How did we resolve this in the past? Um, who has the potential to tell us uh, some of the things that are happening out there? 
who has a contact out there to tell us what is happening in such cases with our competitors, with our comparators, you know, find out. And that's why I keep on saying, in these forums that we are in, create networks. Create strong networks. Networks are your net worth, where I can say, ah, let me call Lydia. Lydia, what's happening out there in your, <clears throat> in your industry? I'm not, um, I'm just, I'm, I'm, it's exchange of ideas <clears throat> where I'm able to learn and come and help my organization. Break the solution down to manageable components. Consider all the implications that uh, might arise, um, the risks that are associated with it, their liabilities might be sh that might be shifted to the organization. Architect a solution and a rationale. So propose. How do we propose? Create a compelling story as to why this will work and why this other thing will not work. Create that compelling story with data and uh, with facts. Define what the organization can expect to see. Be clear on the pros and cons on how you will evaluate them. And how do we implement? Test or pilot fast if possible. Plan, plan well, execute flawlessly. Listen, uh, look at the processes and seek feedback. And finally, where we gather the where we gather the data and the impacts uh, don't be afraid of failure tweak the processes share the results in institutionalize the learning is that what we do in organizations the process in terms of um, whether it is the the, the 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 issue that has a reason but also this is a process that is going to be followed if this is what's going to happen. So some will be real time, but some we've already laid the groundwork in terms of, you know, how are we going, if this was going, if uh, this happens, we'll definitely be able to ask questions, you know, and we'll be able to marinate in it to make sure that that is right, you know. Some. So it's, it's no brainer. And these are some of the things that we need to bring to the attention of the line managers that this is what you need to do. Make sure you have this design on your wall again. Your wall will be colorful at the end of uh, this July series uh, webinars and also impact. It's a very easy way to try and uh, uh, get the data to be able to look at your, um, the, the, your board papers or your management papers that uh, you'll be presenting because you have data that you've been collecting over time. And also at the same time, a very easy way to be able to impact your senior management when you are telling them the five minute talk around a disciplinary and grievance management process in your organization. Any question there before we move on? Any question there? Mm -hmm. Any question there? Before we move on, okay. So let's look at the system. Okay. So what is an evaluation system? Evaluation of the uh, disciplinary and grievance system. Someone who can read for us evaluation? At the evaluation stage, what happens? So we have these four activities. You can evaluate the disciplinary uh, and grievance management system as follows. You have the objectives, you have the uh, uh, activities, and you have the outputs. Okay. These are the three processes. Okay. Someone read for us, please. Okay. Thank you, Gabriel. Oh, okay. Gabriel, go ahead. Abra, are you on mute? Um, Lucy, go ahead. I think I need to bring Gabriel into the, no, he's in the panelist. Uh -huh. Go ahead, Lucy. Uh, is it Lucy myself? Whoever, whoever is going to read. 
<laughs> okay, I'm ready. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate you. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, um, evaluation of this disciplinary and grievance system mm -hmm. objective. The main objective of the evaluation stage is to ensure that all factors related to the system are considered prior to measuring success or failure. This stage determines whether the system uses the correct level of investigation, fact gathering and unbiased approach to analyze a disciplinary or grievance related situation. Exactly. So um, what is a system? Let's, in fact, let's stop there and say, what is a system? We have a process, we have seen the process. And so what, what's, what's, what, what's your grievance management system? What's your disciplinary system? What is a system? Uh, if I may say, um, in regards to a system is a... Yeah. I would take it to be a step by step. So from this step, what is the next step and what is the next one? Mm -hmm. So like it can be uh, something like the first thing is um, there is an issue that is raised usually by the manager who will raise the, the flag that, hey, something has happened here. This staff has done something that they should not have done. Mm -hmm. And then um, the next thing is to ask the manager whether they have the do they have the, the do they have the facts to support what they are saying? Uh, have they inquired from the staff about what is happening for them to make a decision that they are not satisfied with what the employee has explained? Mm -hmm. Let's take an example of maybe a case, a simple case of absenteeism. Mm -hmm. Say the manager comes and says that this employee has not showed up and I would want disciplinary action taken. Yeah. Then the question is, have you found out why the employee did not come to work? Yes, the employee has told me and I'm not satisfied with what they told me. And I think we need to take some formal action. Then the next thing would be, then let's do the, maybe a show cause letter so that the employee can explain in writing why they did what they did. So that's the next step. Then the next step is evaluation of the response of the employee. And then the next step is a decision and then the communication of the decision. Exactly. Thank you, Lucy, for really outlining it very, very well. So the system, a systematic approach to the issue, you know, all this, how is it going from point A to point B, using the process that you have already put in place without skipping any of the, any of the processes. So the system is a big hierarchical picture of um, your, your system. So everybody truly understands that um, whatever, whether it's a disciplinary issue, whether it's a grievance issue, we already have a system in place and everybody understands that system. That system has a process. That process is well understood by everybody. Okay, great. So thank you. Uh -huh. Activity high level investigation techniques, situational fact, fact finding and analysis, approach development, uh, and situational uh, situation assessment. And sometimes you might not, uh, you, you internally, if, if it's really something of grave concern, you might have to ask her, uh, an expert to come and help you, someone who's totally. Uh, Dif uh, different, uh, doesn't work for your organization because sometimes you just need that that extra eye to come and look at things very objectively. They have nothing to lose. They are looking at the situation as it is. They are they do not know who Catherine is, what personality Catherine holds, what um, title Catherine holds, what job description. Of course, they will learn as they go by but they have not interacted with them. Then they are looking at the situation. They are experts in it and they are going to help you analyze that. And half the time, sometimes when uh, it's, it's something very critical in your organization, we must be able to factor in that external people would be very well placed to help us solve that situation. Because if you have brand reputation, uh, if uh, risk and you need to uh, protect it, if things are alarming, if things are dire, we need to be able to call in the experts to help us. Okay. But remember, by the time we are getting there, I, 
Again, I, we should not be there. Even by the time it's getting to really dysfunctional conflicts, I, should we be there? So these are things that should be really at the very minimum in the organization. So output within the disciplinary and grievance um, system, an approach to the potential solution. I, in fact, um, I'm just uh, now starting to become like a broken record because uh, Lucy had already um, alluded and really uh, summarized it very well. Scope and level of uh, uh, misconduct and the grievance, solutions, um, action, out plan, potential risk, critical risk, and basis of the appeal terms. How is our appeal system in this uh, in this place? How many? Uh, how many? When am I? When am I allowed to appeal? How many days will it take to appeal? Who will be in the appeal process for me? Um, is that the final decision? Yes, and of course, appeal is always the final decision. Will I be happy? Sometimes it might not be, but has it been transparent? Yes. Have I learned from this issue? Yes. Should it occur again? If it occurs again, what happens? These are the consequences, and this is the action that will be taken. Okay. Thank you. Diana, I see your hand raised. I see your hand raised, Diana. Would you like to say something? Okay, great. Any question there? Any question? I'd like us to quickly talk about culture in the area, culture uh, of commitment towards discipline. Very important. What do you think about how culture plays a big role in uh, the area of uh, evaluation of discipline and uh, grievance uh, handling? Does it, how does culture play a big role? Anyone? Anyone? Okay, so let's have a look at it and yoga our minds so that we have a nice discussion around it, okay? Ah, uh, so culture to commitment towards discipline. Objective, a culture of commitment towards discipline aims to make discipline a part of and part and parcel of its inherited, inherent corporate culture. It seeks to stage and, pro, and provides a framework for considering all factors to build discipline in an organization. This provides the foundation for a disciplined environment and is em, embodied in clear and mutually understood policies. We agree that culture plays a big role. That culture plays a big role towards the objective, towards the activities as well, and the outcome. You know, the first one we were looking at the evaluation of uh, discipline, and now we are looking at how culture works towards us committing towards a disciplined workforce. Okay, great. So the objective of commitment. Would like to talk to us about uh, commitment in around activities, around culture. What are some of the activities that we'll be doing there? Okay. So around the activities, potential change identification with respect to discipline, discipline scope uh, definition, approach to discipline development, policy development, and discipline negotiation and agreement. I'll go through them very quickly and then I'll, uh, I will wrap up. And then under output, an approach, scope, and objectives to the potential disciplinary culture in organization, properly drawn out policies, proposals by the organization and its employees. The client understands the disciplined culture and image of the organization when we are trying to get the commitment that should be there. Mm -hmm. And then under engagement, we will also look at engagement in discipline and grievance uh, management. Again, what is the objective? What, is the, what are the activities that we shall be looking at? And finally, what is the out, output? So we are saying under um, the engagement, the objective is one of the greatest objective is that the discipline and grievance management system 
can aim to achieve the engagement of both employees and the management in their pursuit of discipline. Engagement of employees towards discipline can serve to be a focal point to keep an organization on the discipline track. And then some of the activities is to ensure around engagement is to engage and drive employees towards discipline, analyze disciplinary and grievance related issues, envision uh, solutions towards disciplinary and grievance related issues, and finally implement recommendations for disciplinary and grievance related management. Then under the output, we have documentation guidelines for disciplinary hearing and grievance interviews, analyze the reports for each incident, using the output uh, from each incident to improve the disciplinary and grievance management next time. Uh, so the role of improvement in disciplinary uh, and grievance management, another aspect that is crucial in disciplinary uh, grievance management is to continually improve as follows. Okay, so closure. Under closure, the objective is to the main objective of any disciplinary and grievance management is to continuously improve in an orderly way. Evaluation of each conduct and grievance incident will help to determine the extent to which anticipated goals have been achieved and areas improved. The activities around that is to renew each misconduct and grievance incident, measure employee uh, satisfaction, harvest existing knowledge, confirm successful impact on proposal and proposed solutions, evaluate, mitigate measures to avoid misconduct and grievance among employees. Mm -hmm. And the output plan for continuous upkeep for existing processes and improvement, formal evaluation documentation, including evaluation criteria and measurement and summary, of reports and debriefings. Okay. And finally, is maintenance. Under maintenance, we know that we should be able to maintain uh, existing policies and update them from time to time. And then, under activities, is to provide management with information and thorough reports, like what I have said, and better relationships between the actions taken and the policies mentioned in the documentation. So that is how our system actually should be working. So just to recap that, you should be able to have maintenance in your system, you should be able to have closure in your system, and you should be able to have engagement in your system around uh, disciplinary and uh, grievance, uh, and you should be able first and foremost to make sure that you have commitment and you're evaluating what is to be done, okay? Great, questions? 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 Is that, uh, I'm sure it's things that you have within your, within your organization, but in a very systematic way, yeah. Gabriel? Sorry, Malim, I think I have had a lot of challenges on my end, but okay. uh, I, want to ask, I want to ask uh, this question. Yeah. Uh, that uh, you've taught us about a uh, grievance system mm -hmm. and disciplinary procedures. Mm -hmm. how, would you, how would we approach? Because right now, uh, I know of an organization that we will be working on and part of the job that they have given us is actually to embed this. And we anticipate resistance uh, because of the culture. They are not used to this. They are not used to disciplinary systems and grievance systems. Mm -hmm. So uh, from the onset, they, they, they see as if we are bringing uh, some unnecessary changes which mm -hmm. have not been there. That is the culture. Mm -hmm. How do you embed this now? Because, uh, yeah, yeah, so that you are not told this HR is bringing new things. Mm -hmm. New things. Yes. HR is the one who is... Um, bringing new things to the organization and stuff like that. I think that is very valid. Um, and I like that question. I'll throw it to plenary for us to discuss how would you embed a culture 
of um, of uh, discipline and grievance <coughs> in an organization. And I'd like us to think about what, what Gabriel has asked from what we said about creating an environment and what are the rights of the employees and what are the rights of the employer for it to gain traction and for people to embrace this change. Anyone? Please let's share. Let me try. Mm -hmm. So if you ever face the court um, over unfair termination mm -hmm. or over uh, unfair dismissal, mm -hmm. the only thing that will save you is your documentation. And uh, whether you followed what they keep calling fair administrative practices. So even though other managers think that we are introducing too many things to the line managers or to the staff, I think in HR, we really don't have a choice. This disciplinary and grievance system is very important. And it has come about because for a long time, people were being uh, mishandled uh, in the workplace and uh, many things happening that were a bit uh, uncouth. But now what has happened is the employees are very litigant. And in HR, we are the ones who face the courts and we are the ones who have to have something that we can use to argue our case. So many a times you'll find uh, your managers did not put their warning letters in their, their warnings in writing. They let a, a problem escalate. They did appraisals um, shoddily and then they convinced you to fire the person and the employee uses the same uh, data that you have to go and uh, sue you. On the other hand also, um, there's a point there that says that about the investigation, fact gathering and unbiased approach to analyze the disciplinary situation. It would be, if you, and if you don't go to the police or to whoever, you, you, if you have an internal audit, for example, where there are frauds or you have, um, another way of investigating within the system, make sure that you have reports that are documented so that you look like you're fair. So the court usually wants to see whether you're, as an employer, you are fair. And all the time, the burden of proof is on the employer. Then another thing, Gabriel, is that managers also need to be disciplined themselves in the way they handle other people. And the only way to do that is to, from orientation, to keep reminding people that they have, uh, they can say what is happening to them. They can uh, bring out their grievances. They can be corrected if they are wrong and to create an environment where people can negotiate and talk. So yes. that's what I would say. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Very well put together, almost summarizing what I wanted to say. Someone else, someone else. Oh, and I didn't finish. Yeah. Uh, these cases that go to court of constructive dismissal uh, where the person says that the workplace was intolerable. Mm. They, some, most of them do not go through the grievance process. Then later on, they say that the manager was making it impossible for them. The manager was uh, pushing them to the wall, but they kept quiet all through. So this grievance, again, is another place where people can air their frustration. Then you need to uh, make managers aware that they actually need to confront someone who is looking unhappy and find out what is it, what's the problem then find an airing ground because sometimes most of us are not able to come out and uh, and actually face the person and tell them you are stressing me and I am feeling uncomfortable uh, coming to work every day. Mm -hmm. Very true. Because we have good jobs are few and far between. I think the opening statement, um, and everybody has alluded to that, is that from your brand from how your brand is perceived, real or perceived or imagined, to how you handle people internally, to the time you handle people, how they exit, works around your uh, performance management system. And that's one of those things within that system of performance management is disciplinary and grievance management process. 
How I feel that I am hard. How I feel that I am I, I am handled in this organization talks a lot about the culture in the organization. Again, things about culture. Talks around our personality and our interactions with each other. Talks around my understanding of my role in this organization. So once we have all that right, everything else starts falling into place. And people should understand that under the employee relations um, policy, these are some of the best practices that we should put there. Just because we have over 50 employees, it, uh, it's, it's only when we shall bring in a sexual harassment policy. No. Whether we have two employees, we should have policies which are progressive and actually uh, fit for purpose to be able to manage these two people who are in this organization. First and foremost, these, uh, these policies actually manage everybody, entire organization, the systems that we have, the, the top management to the lower cadre people, this is to equalize us and to have a, a fairness around it. So once people really understand that these policies are not to, to stifle growth, uh, actually to look at, oh, when I have made a mistake, I'll be disciplined. And this is the process that is going to be followed. Okay, you remember where it says it's to actually boost morale and to get people to get to the next level. Then also, if I have a problem, I can actually report. I have talked to you many times and you are not hearing. Bring that form. I am going to report and I am going to take it uh, forward and I will be listened to and I will not be victimized. So you would go in and say it's for the greater good. If anything, if you don't have it, you are doing yourself a disservice from, uh, from the area of risk and liability to the organization, to your employee value preposition, to your brand positioning, and when you take uh, when people are taking you to court, you have no documentation to be able to stand your ground that this is what happened. So you would actually not say that um, I am actually going to bring in all these policies. These policies, when you started from the premise that they are part of performance management in this organization. And all these other, other ones actually form like perform, uh, training and development, compensation, wellness, all those things, you know, they are part of it. Then people have better acceptance and better understanding that they actually protect me and they protect the organization. If you want the organization to continue being a going concern, for it to be able to make money, it is important for us to have these things. These things, we are going to work with you together to develop them. We are going to hear your input. We are going to hear some of the things that you would like put in these uh, policies. We are going to be able to provide you a platform to read them and to see whether they really talk to you and talk to our culture and talk to our strategy. So when you have those kind of bargaining points, and all the time we are saying this is where we are in this issue, you get more people warming up to you and saying, oh, and yeah, well, this is important. And if you let line managers know it is your responsibility to be able to execute some of these mandates and will be able to provide you with the, with the tools and the skills to be able to do it, people now start understanding. But we must also be clear that if we don't have them, this is the risk that we hear, have as an organization. Okay, just to sum up what Carol said as well. Okay, anybody else? Anybody else who would like to add something? Uh, Gilbert, how is that? Uh, Gabriel, sorry. Yes, I think that's fine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You yes. have somewhere to start from? Yes, we have somewhere to start from. And yeah. um, I, I like uh, the way Caro has, Caro in Mwangi has uh, put it. Mm -hmm. I'm sure in, in real practice, there's still quite an issue because if, for instance, you are doing summary dismissal, and I'm sure we are going to come to that, uh, which must have been led by, it must have uh, emanated from a, a disciplinary uh, process, which was taken through. And it could even be uh, the grievance could even have affected staff 
so that maybe it is one staff member who is complaining against the other one who is really harassing. Um, I'm sure in the instance of fair administration where the courts will be talking about fair administration process, that the court want to see that you did fair administrative section, I think uh, action, I think that is that would be a, a very gray area. And maybe I can reserve that question until you take us through uh, dismissals so that we can join them together. But at least yeah. there, is a, there, is a, there is a foundation framework from practical perspective on how to go about grievances, exactly. especially for 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 a culture that is not used to that a culture which is used to the main boss saying everything and uh, a culture where you have some employees you know in some instances employees will even gang you have like five managers who drives everything so that mm -hmm. all these issues of grievances are are swallowed i think um we we i will be able to reframe my question so that you assist us more when you now take us through dismissal process yeah. but yeah. that's the founding yeah. thank you fantastic and um I, I would like to also to emphasize is that there is no need if we just have very well written policies and we cannot use them because some people um are blocking us from doing so we should start from discussing the blockage. What happens? You know, we it's it's there, but we can't use it. So what's the need? It's as well as we should not actually have it. So even as mm -hmm. we are introducing these things, we need to check on people's behavior, people's ability to embrace, people's understanding of these things so that um, it's not like, oh, okay, we have it but it's never practiced. And people go feeling so bad about it. And what happens is that people, when they decide, well, I've had it enough, I what I will be going. We don't want those kind of cultures around. And of course, as we keep on saying, it's easier said than done, but we need to start somewhere. We need to be the brave ones to come and say, can we have this discussion? Let's start it small and also five minutes from where it is, okay? Okay, great. So um, I would like to say, but uh, let you know that using the correct word at the ideal time and in the ideal way might be all that is required to deal with a breach of rules than a formal meeting. You know, continuously having those, having those discussions catching people at the right time, telling people, hey, that, we need to stop it. We need to stop it from the very beginning. I heard you shout uh, to the officer and the words that you use are not within our culture. You know, you should not be saying such things. And they say, ah, it was in the heat of the moment. In the heat of the moment, you need to count one to five before that happens. And so that we don't get into these uh, formal meetings, which are... Uh, a bit more, a bit more grinding and heavy, and everybody doesn't want to be involved. Okay, have you ever tried asking a colleague to accompany you to a disciplinary? organization. Let me pack it there as we meet tomorrow. As we unpack, we'll take you to the <laughs> to the disciplinary <laughs> um, to to the to the disciplinary. Um, meeting and everybody says, Apana, eh, Miss Wesley, sorry. Eh, yeah. And you thought you had friends, a hundred of them in the organization. But when you ask them, this has happened to me, please come help me, even just to comfort me during that time. Okay, so that's when it says, learn to do the right thing. You know, straight in the, straight, stay in the straight and narrow way, stay on your lanes. Isn't that a nice phrase for us now? Stay on your lane and do the best that you can. Any question, any further input, any question before we say uh, good afternoon and uh, we meet tomorrow? Was it useful? Is it necessary? Hi, Catherine. Hello, Grace. Now I have a concern about, um, I don't know how to put it, whether it's a routine or it's very common, 
where grievances come in the nature of uh, witch hunting. So how do we handle those witch hunting issues? It's a grievance, yes, but every discussion just ends up it's witch hunting. How do we resolve it and how do we even uh, stop it within a company? Because uh, probably it's, it's too much. You even wonder whether it's part and parcel of the culture or how do we address that whole issue of witch hunting? Thank you. Very valid, very common, very annoying. You're trying to settle scores with someone, so what I will do, I will write um, a two-page letter about you. And you know very well it is, um, it's malicious. How do we, it's, it's definitely a culture. It's a bad culture that we have. And uh, we need to address it from a culture perspective. We also need to be very clear is that uh, if we find that it's it's you what you have brought to the fore, it's malicious. There will be consequences. Go ahead, Grace, please go and check on your um, policy to see whether you have a place where it says that if um, the grievance is investigated and it's found to be to be uh, untrue, malicious, or maligning to someone then there will be disciplinary action taken against you. We don't make it a fine print. Make it the opening statement, you know. But of course, we know that half the time is that when people are trying to settle scores, where did that come from? It came from a small conflict. That conflict was not addressed. You remember the latent conflict where we addressed, we said, okay, it simmers, it went back like a dormant mountain, and then all of a sudden it erupts. We don't, uh, we, we, it manifests itself. We do not address it. We sugarcoat it and what it is, and then it gets there. But it now becomes, well, unfair competition. I don't like you. It becomes personality instead of addressing the issue that is there. Most of the time, unfortunately, it's a result of um, poor culture, poor work ethics, poor attitudes in the organization, that actually leads to that. So it's important for us to reaffirm and continue literating that grievances should be factual, the dates should be indicated, what happened, what you tried to do, so that by the time they are coming, when the person is called, there is no doubt that this is. So make it difficult. When people are telling their story, they have to think the day the time, what happened, who was there, who witnessed it, what are the documentation? You know, so it's not just hearsay. And of course, by the time we know that uh, Catherine has taken uh, Grace forward, we already, even us, they are the feelers that say, hmm, they don't get along very well. But getting along very well, what have we done to say, we see you too, you don't get along very well. Is there something that we can help? to make sure that you're getting very well. And people will just air it out. Maybe just see Catherine is junior, but an am MCA. And you tried coming to get a tender from the county. And I said, you cannot get it. We know that new Koinje to Nazozana. Yeah, but internally, if we have good systems, we have good procedures, we should not get there. Mm -hmm. Someone else would like to contribute, uh, Gabriel, yes? Mm -hmm. Yes, Molim, I think uh, you also need to make comments mm -hmm. on a, a form of uh, grievance, which hunting grievance procedure, which I have noted mm -hmm. that has been noted on uh, a number of professionals. For, is, for instance, you'll find if it's a HR, it's known that a HR is regulated by IHRIM. It's, if it's an accountant, as well is regulated by ISPAC. Mm -hmm. And if it's, for, for example, a certified secretary, mm -hmm. uh, we, we have a mechanism where uh, these issues are raised to the institute regulators. Now, in terms of witch hunting, uh, you will find that a regulated HR, like ourselves uh, who are here, you you find the, the 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 company wants to divert divert from 
taking you through um, grievance procedure and disciplinary procedure within the company, but they end up writing. They end up writing directly to the regulator. And what we've noted, because it's an area I've been concerned with, I've um, looked at what happens in the three institutions that I've talked about, you will find that the regulator uh, evokes its disciplinary mechanism of even checking whether you you did it wrong or you are correct. And they later on find that uh, you did not have an issue. The verdict they pass to the company is that uh, uh, they have investigated and you are professional and there is no disciplinary which should be taken ahead of that. Mm -hmm. Now, little do the regulator know that this disciplinary issue was raised either to block you in an interview or something within the company. So there is that mismatch between grievance procedure method by, uh, by employer to consultants or to regulators, sorry, to regulated practitioners like ourselves here who are members of IHRM. And you wait and wait and wait, and your regulators gives a verdict that, that you are okay, you have not breached anything. That thing has been taking place in a number of uh, mm. institutions. Noted. Yeah. How do we go about it? I think it's um, it's it's very unfair and very unfortunate that we will not first exhaust the internal mechanisms which are um, which are already anchored in the organization, and we run to the regulator. Um, so we are doing things concurrently. We have said, well, you need to come to a disciplinary. You a grievance has been raised up, uh, about you, and we are we we investigating, and we want you to 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 be part of the process because it touches on you. Meanwhile, at the same time, we are busy writing a letter and say, um, this is what's happening to Catherine in this organization. We feel that she's not following the ethics and stuff like that. We we need to be very careful as employers, because then um, it's already breach of trust. We have internal mechanisms which need to be exhausted first. And of course, if, um, if we feel that where is our responsibility, and, and I'm sorry, maybe I don't know this answer, unfortunately, where is the employer, where is an employer's responsibility to take your case to, the regulating body of your profession to say that um, you 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 did this and this and this, and that they should actually block you. I think there is a big we we need to understand, and I, I unfortunately Gabriel I don't have that answer, but actually it's very interesting, and I'm happy to 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 think through and for us to think through. But I believe first internally we should exhaust the mechanism with fairness and transparency and the right decision should be taken. Even at disciplinary, even if it warrants that uh, the decision that has been taken warrants that you terminate from my, uh, on, uh, from my uh, employment, what does that mean? What, what, what good is it for me to go and, um, and report you to the regulator that we've actually fired Gabriel, because of this and this, so that they block you. I, I don't understand. I, I find it very hard to, yeah. to even think about it. So does that mean I am so bad that my license should be withdrawn and I should not get a job somewhere else? It also borders around ability to, to be able to fend for myself as an individual. As a human being, where am I going to get the next job? Where am I going to get the next consultancy? I think there should be regulations around how organizations can take someone to the regulator, what are the circumstances, and what the regulator will do around that. Caro and Gabriel, Caro, go first. I think it's a heated, um, it's something that uh, is very debatable. Yes, Caro. Yeah, on the side of the employee taking you to the regulator, mm -hmm. if it is an issue that uh, you are on the way to doing your disciplinary, you need to have your facts right. And again, documentation is what will save you. 
so that you're not looking like you're not professional in what you are doing. And so to be professional, you need to have your processes in place and you need to have your, your documentation in place. So it means your line managers really have to be very, very keen on, on uh, how they are following up on the, on the issues that are there if they are disciplinary. Mm -hmm. So where the employee has taken you to the regulator, there is nothing much we can do to stop that except to make sure that we are very objective in the way we assign work, job descriptions, um, appraisals are done objectively. You give expectation letters for this year, your budget is so much, you need to do this much, la, la, la. and then also have a follow up of how people are progressing. It's a lot of paperwork for HR, but it's the only way we can save ourselves. So even if the regulator writes to you, you're able to write back and say, uh, this is where the person has reached. This is where we are. However, this information is uh, confidential unless you want us to discuss further on the issue. Mm -hmm. So to yeah. be very clear that even on your side, you have your facts right, you have your documentation in place, and anyone challenging you, you have the information and you're speaking professionally. Exactly. Because I'm also thinking there are issues about GDPR. What, what information can you give out there? That, yeah, you have uh, to be very you careful. cannot very careful. I think it's very by the time I'm thinking of taking you or my employer, I'm, I'm uh, let's say I'm an employer. Let's say this company of us, ACHRP, uh, we provide training services and uh, we want to take uh, Gabriel to IHRM. It's it's have we really looked at internally or even called a third party as we talked yesterday, a, a conciliator, a mediator, an arbitrator, by the time we are leaving, uh, we are reaching there. Irene and Gabriel, Gabriel first and then Irene. Yes, uh, it's just a, a final sh shot from my end yeah. about this. Uh, this the, the, then what is regulator in terms of knowing first and foremost, instead of just receiving the letter, knowing first and foremost, whether the internal mechanisms have been exhausted, especially yeah. if it is a, a kind of a witch, witch hunting uh, uh, assignment, because mm -hmm. I've said this, I've noted uh, someone would want to block you from spreading in your in your professional body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then that would be done so that temporarily your network is getting worse now. Gabriel. Your, your network is and getting you don't worse. qualify and so yeah. i'm just looking at it from there that's it yeah. that's it sorry yeah. sorry it's... are you able to get me now yes we're able to get you now so yeah. so, so i'm just saying that yeah, i'm just saying that from the from the regulator how would the regulator ensure we lost you again anyway yeah so what uh, uh, we are saying is the, that, the uh, they, ensure that the, this reporting. I, I think, Gabriel, yeah, you have uh, real challenges with your internet. What we are trying to say is that if it's really for me progressing and it's witch hunting, it's a vendetta against me, we should be able to really call it out and uh, have very stringent ways of stopping it and condoning it and um, and making sure that it does not happen. Because then uh, if that's what's going to happen, it's going to be very unfortunate, all of us. I mean, I, I'm sure there are people who, who, who would want to block your progress. Not everybody is happy for you, but how do we live harmoniously that um, as long as um, we are doing work that needs to be done. I'm staying on my lane. I'm respectful to you. I have a cordial working relationship with you. Uh, but just because you looked at me and you didn't like me, now what can I do? What can I do? You looked at me the first day. Simpendi, simpendi too. Simpendi too is not is will not will is will not uh, 
get you anywhere. Facts and figures in, ex, uh, finish the internal um, the internal mechanisms before you open up to external mechanisms. There's so much at risk GDPR, you know, documentation and stuff like that. Irene, I see you had your hand up for a long time. Sorry about that. Let's go. Irene, you can unmute. Irene, you're muted. I, am I the only Irene on the call? Yes, yes, I can see you're the only Irene. Moshuno. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yes, uh, sorry. Uh, oh, definitely, I agree with Gabriel that we need to adopt the internal process. And as HR, we need to be very active in, in ensuring that um, the internal Followed often when these issues come up, sometimes we, we tend to be used, we forget to go back and follow the internal process and maybe offer advice, you know, uh, throw off advice in the air and that kind of thing. So, as HR, we need to make sure that our processes and uh, the grievance process, the disciplinary process uh, are implemented well and applied equally across the board. And, and like we said also, inculcating that culture the senior and all uh, And I, when when we we make practice a culture, it's um it's less likely to to even uh, go out there because employees will know and adopt it and and, and be able to follow it, and also just encouraging resolutions from the lowest level so that if two people have a grievance with each other, either they don't like each other or they think the other person is treating them in a certain way, just encouraging uh, it to be, to be resolved at that basic level between the two of them before it escalates to, uh, to any senior level, to the supervisors and what have you. Very yeah. true, very true, yeah. Um, just uh, validating what we have been talking about for the last three days now, around resolving grievances at uh, the very the the, the the resolving conflicts, uh, difference of opinions at the very lowest level. Everybody really trying to understand what is their role. Line managers been very um, aware of their surroundings and the people that they supervise us knowing our processes and procedures, respecting those processes, especially respecting those processes, that we can use them, whether it, they are being used um, on the CEO, whether you, senior management or the lowest person in the organization, and it will have the, res, the, the outcomes will be based on the issue at hand. There'll be no favoritism, there'll be no victimization, and um, also making sure that uh, we are complying with the statutory laws. We are complying with the body that regulates your, your industry and also uh, regulates your profession. And even when we are going out to the third party, we have every documentation and there is no breach of uh, of uh, GDPR. That's, that's very important. So, And we must also be alive to the fact that uh, if um, if you are a real local company, then it's much easier to operate, to understand, and to be able to do that. If you are multinational, you are open up to other rules from head office, uh, the kind of business who regulates you and stuff like that. So it's it's complex. Let's keep ourselves um, updated on the on the core business of our organizations. That's the only way we're able to do that. As I keep on saying. There's a lot to do, there's a lot to do, but all that has to be done perfectly. It has to be done um, willingly and it has to be done uh, correctly and timely so that uh, there are no loopholes, there are no loopholes. So again, we go back to today saying, am I going to look at our policies? What does it say? And even as we come tomorrow to discuss further, around uh, the processes, how it is done, look at uh, case studies, you know, the way we are throwing case studies around what would you do best practices as we ask questions. I think it's really been worthwhile today. I, I really enjoyed myself. Um, if there are no other questions, I will end it here. 
and uh, ask uh, all of us to be bright and early tomorrow as we finish the 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 rest of the part. The the notes are already on the LMS. Feel feel free to have a look at them and uh, to filter what you would like uh, to be done in your organization as we continue the engagement. Thank you once again. I wish you a really lovely day and see you tomorrow. Bye for now. And God bless you. Always nice seeing all of you. Take care. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Kudos. Always nice to Thank see you. you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Bye. Yeah.